All right, ladies and gentlemen, all our listeners out there, it is time. I am in the studio with Mike Cervini. He is a musician from Windsor. He's got a new single out titled Forever Yours, and it's available on every streaming platform. We're so excited and we're honored to have you here. Mike, how are you? Good, good, Spencer. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you coming in and uh, we're very excited to have you here. And uh, I want to start out uh, asking some questions about, you know, what got you into music? What what bands and artists inspired you when you were young? Oh, like anything from... Third Eye Blind, Green Day, Goo Goo Dolls, you know, that kind of music. I was 11 when I started guitar, and I just remember watching a concert on TV. I think it was Third Eye Blind or Green Day or multiple, and I just, I wanted to be them, and uh, I pursued it from there. Very nice. Uh, how old were you when you began singing and strumming a guitar? Uh, 11. So I remember getting my first guitar. Um, it was an electric guitar at 11. Did some lessons, and just, I was really just fascinated. I would spend hours, even at that age, learning albums from my favorite artists like Green Day and Blink at that time. And uh, I would just learn song by song by ear. Um, But yeah, 11 years old is when it started. So you mentioned taking lessons and you come from a musical family, correct? Correct, yeah. So did, uh, was your teacher a family member by any chance? No, no, that would have been really cool. But uh, you know, I was around music. My dad's side of the family is very musical. My grandpa played guitar and sang and and just uh, most of my cousins as well. So I've been around it at an early age and uh, I guess it just was in me and I found that interest and I really just you don't know what you're really into sometimes but it ends up you have that like moment where like you know what this is really what you think about all the time and you end up being really good at it and but you got to practice 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 and uh, I just found myself at a young age doing that practice is is huge and how many hours a day would you say would you practice all i can remember is you know you're you're 11 12 13 you're still young and i would find myself locked into a room one to two hours you know after school stuff like that and learning and just like stopping every part of the song and just you know guitar chord by you know chord by chord and uh just learning it so just hours every day do you remember your first gig show by chance? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying it like that because it's like I was I was 13. I was playing uh, at a talent show in grade eight, and I, I wasn't actually singing at that time. Somebody else was singing "Basket Case," and great song. And I was just playing guitar though. And then uh, I believe that was the first. And then into high school, I did. I was singing my own stuff, uh, playing covers as well, and uh, and yeah, right, right in grade nine. Yeah. So. You started out at 11, and I want to know roughly the age, if you remember, that you realized, you know, I'm good enough for this. I can make a career out of this. In my 20s, I mean, I I had different bands when I was, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, that kind of age range. Um, But I always had acoustic, softer kind of songs. And I think um, once I started really focusing on that, I think when I was like 21, 22. And then I wrote my first album around that time. I think 24 is when it came out, my first one. And that's when it went off from there. Your, your that's debut realized, album, yeah. The World You Know, uh, how much pride and accomplishment did you feel and you, you took from that? Because, you know, this is your first album. And how how exciting is that? You, you got one out. How did that change your life? Yeah. Uh, so it did change. There's a lot of people that I met over the years and, and connections and, and opportunities that I, I wouldn't have. Um, that, you know, the the events that led up to the reason making that album for me, there's always, how do I describe it? Anything negative that may impact you in your life can always have a positive outcome, if that makes sense. Um, so I just tried to use what I felt and wrote about it. And um, also the album is shaped around losing my mom as well um, over 15 years ago. And I think I know she would be proud. Uh, She was always, she was always the one that pushed me to pursue music. And I think that was more of like honoring her and keeping her memory alive for me and me also um, coping with everything with what happened and when she was sick and that was my outlet. And I think that changed a lot of, aspects of my life um, for the better as well and and also just helped me get through things like I said and it was important for me to, to make that album. I want to talk about two songs from that album right now and a miracle they're they're tributes to honor your mother and I want to know how important it was to put into words what was going on at that time were you kind of in uh, 
a little funk, we'll say, and you know, this was your outlet to deal with things. You might as well write about it, make make a song about it. Best way to get your feelings out, or was it something different? It was that. Um, I don't think I sat down and 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 thought that I want to write about what was going on. It just came to me, and and really great songs, even for other artists, even big artists. That you know, I often hear them say. Um, that it just came to them. And it's really true for any songwriter. Um, and in my situation at that time, when I was going through that with my mom, uh, she was sick. It was just something that I remember being on the floor, um, sitting with my guitar, and just playing whatever chords that came to mind, whatever melodies came to mind. And it for uh, right now, uh, the song right now, I remember as I was writing it, as it was coming to me, it was about having that desperate thought of being able to save her and or and and also not knowing that there's nothing you can do in that situation um and so i believe that's that's that was my mindset for that and then for a miracle um similar um more so just going through hospital hospital visits and um having that type of song and message and, and the lyrics that I was writing in a miracle, um, it, I'd say it's similar, um, but lyrically different. Like I wrote different lyrics, obviously, but um, it, it, it's just feeling that emotion of not knowing that you can't do anything about it um, and, and just writing about that. Well, don't go anywhere to our listeners because we got plenty to talk about. Mike and I are going to go to a break, but here is his song, Been Through So Much, 107.9 CKBG. We're back on 107.9 CKBG. Mike Cervini in the studio. Mike, how are you? Good, Spencer. Having a good time so far? Yeah, really great. Fantastic. I want to talk about in 2013, you released What Would You Do at the Capitol Theater with help of local women's shelter organizations to bring awareness against domestic violence. And there were survivor stories. And former Miss Canada 2012, Jacqueline Miles, hosted the event. Can you talk about how important it was to bring awareness to domestic violence? Is there a, a reason why you chose that in particular or just something that you thought, you know, it needed to get highlighted? Well, I think... I thought it needed to get highlighted 100%, but it also, it was, um, it made sense because with what I wrote the song about, there was verses in there uh, that describe certain things like that, situations like that for domestic violence or really anything. And, you know, I can, I'll go through a little bit about the lyrics in that, but um, it just made sense. And I, and I wanted to have it connect to something to have a benefit show and and what made sense it well and to me that made sense a little bit um you know in the lyrics with what would you do it talks about you know you'll see something on somebody on the street uh, let's say a couple fighting you know getting a little bit too heavy with that with the fighting what would you do in that situation would you walk away would you intervene or you know somebody getting beat um or roughed up or something would you intervene most people walk away. Most people don't want to um, do anything because, first of all, out of fear and also maybe not their business in some scenarios. Um, So based on the lyrics, I wanted to connect it to something. Domestic violence was one of them, how it can play out in the lyrics. And uh, yeah, having that kind of benefit show uh, really helped for them and uh, made the show even that much bigger. On a night like that, where there were survivors that shared their stories, it was obviously a really emotional night, but you brought awareness to it. Did that night, you know, they get to share their stories and you're, you're highlighting, as we mentioned, you know, on domestic violence. Did you feel like it was a win because the survivors were there, share their stories and hear something that's an issue. And it was, you know, just a, a nice thing to do. It was 100% a win. I remember somebody came up. It wasn't like many people that came up to me saying what I'm about to say, but one person did come up and say to me directly that they appreciate and and thanked me very much for having this type of event Um, because, you know, survivors did share their stories, and that's important, but nobody wants to talk about these things, especially at that time. Things like that weren't happening, those kind of events um, it didn't have to be a benefit concert, um, but people coming up and sharing their stories, that was important to that one person. And 
the fact that they told me that made everything, you know, worth it. Absolutely. Uh, in 2017, you got to fly to Germany to work on a pre-production on a new song you co-wrote with a relative. Can you talk about your experience traveling overseas like that to record a song? And was this the first time you went like, whoa, this is rock star life. Like, I'm going over now. It, yeah, definitely. It was it was really, really amazing, uh, really great experience. And um, I remember, so it's it's um, a relative of mine. And, uh, he, you know, he's, he's in his 50s. He's older. I haven't seen this guy probably for 20 plus years. Um, and he decided to come over here first uh, to visit family and stuff. And we, we, he's a guitar musician. Um, and he had a lot of ideas that he brought to me. And we, I remember making, we, we had tons of ideas. So we kind of went back and forth and we were set on this one song. And you know what? I wanted to go visit there, uh, him over there, and uh, we decided to record some of it over there, like the pre-production of it. And I already knew that I planned to take it with me back in the studio here um, at SLR Studios, where I always go to. But I remember sitting late at night thinking of the lyrics, and honestly, we had studio time booked there in Germany, and I'm like, what am I going to do? I woke up, first of all, with a migraine, uh, and I'm like, this is great. Like, this is not ideal. Uh, I didn't have lyrics yet for the verses and uh, I just I made it you know just in time when we went there and everything worked out but yeah I'm, I'm happy with that whole experience and, and the studio and and the, just the environment so much different the people are different the culture is different and it was a great experience I'd say what town or city were you in uh, I forget the town like if I heard it right now I'd remember but I forget the name it was a small town okay that, small yeah, town absolutely yeah. and you ended up finishing this song in Windsor correct yeah, In Windsor is one of the singles that uh, was on my uh, second album, and it, it was great. It was great. Um, I had tons of new material after that, though, and I just, you know, some of those songs were a little bit older as well, but the whole experience with just creating it um, here and in Germany was just something I'd never forget, yeah. For our listeners that don't know, can you tell us uh, the name of that song and what it's about? Yeah, no, the, well, that song is called Forever, and uh, it was something that, you know, just kind of came to me um, in in the place that I was at with my life. And uh, it was just, it was really great. I'll never forget it. Uh, you released a new song a little over a month ago titled Forever Yours. And can you talk about the inspiration behind that song? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's for anyone that, um, you know, everyone deserves love. And I feel like everyone has that thought that, you know what, they want that in their life. And it was something um, that I think was represented very, very, very good in the music video. We did it in one take, and we had different types of couples, uh, I think five sets of couples. And in order to do it in one take, everything was planned. So I was walking around while I was singing the verses and chorus, um, walking around each couple. Um, everyone was in sync. So we had to rehearse. So every movement I made was rehearsed. Everything, how the actors were acting was on cue. Um, lighting, there was a, somebody holding the light um, in the music video at every step that I was walking you know, around the actors. And uh, it was just incredible. I can't believe we pulled it off because we probably practiced like 10 to 15 times even before the song was in the background before, we're, you know, as we're filming. Um, and, you know, that type of video the best take wins, right? One, the the very best take, that's what we'll use, yeah. And that's your second time working with the Capitol Theater. You, you filmed it there. Uh, yeah. Was there any particular reason why you chose that venue or you just, you, you knew, you're like, you know what, this fits it perfect. This is a nice big space and it looks, uh, the aesthetics, what you wanted? Yeah, you know, originally, so I worked with director and filmmaker Ken Aimlin, uh, second time now, um, and he just has amazing ideas. We went back and forth, um, this one take video with different couples on stage and just playing out different scenarios and different re types of relationships, uh, made sense to do it on a stage like this, uh, where he could have controlled lighting. Um, and, uh, I wanted something really epic looking like with, with, musicians behind me not just like guitar drums and stuff we had violins cello piano um and so it's just that kind of environment in a capital theater with those types of instruments um just it made sense and uh it was really great yeah 
Well, Mike and I are going to just let you uh, listen to our listeners. We're going to let you listen to Forever Yours on 107.9 CKBG. We're very happy to play this. Mike and I are back here on 107.9 CKBG. That was Forever Yours. And uh, Mike, you know, uh, that's, that's a great song. And uh, we were talking about the music video there. But how about the, the production side of it? It was it was involved. <laughs> um, I remember bringing the demo um, to Marty Bach uh, from SLR Studios. And I just, you know, sometimes I'll send him little voice messages of stuff, of song ideas. And, and this one he was excited about a lot. Uh, he already had everything kind of in his head of how it can sound like. And I trust him. I've been working with him for 10 plus years. And so I trust his instincts with the songs that I create. Um, and the production, it was it's my first ballad. Um, it was a lot, you may not be able to tell, but it, it is a lot slower than I originally, you know, strummed it and, and showed it off to him. Um, but, you know, I took his advice and there's a lot of amazing instruments. There's cello, there's a timpani in there near the end of the song. There's a violin. Um, did I say piano? I don't know, but piano in there. And uh, it just, it makes it that much bigger. And, 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 and I just, I love it. Yeah. And the song been through so much that we played earlier. Um, can you talk about what that song is about? Yeah, it was one of those songs. It wasn't anything that I was going through personally. Um, it just kind of came to me the topic of, people struggling. Um, maybe subconsciously con- consciously I was, but I wasn't really aware of it, but just it kind of flowed. It flowed out of me and I just went with it lyrically. Um, and yeah, just feeling like uh, anyone that feels like they're alone, they're not understood, um, to just have that positive outlook that no matter what you've been through, um, you'll get through it. You may have already in the past before, this would be no different, whatever current situation you're in, and just think back to uh, what you've went through, where you are now, because, you know, you've been through so much, but um, there's nothing that you can't get through. Yeah. I want to ask you, what is your most proudest moment in your music career so far? Hmm. It's a good question. Good, good, good question. There's a lot of... Um, I'd say making the first album was definitely important. Um, that That's like your baby, right? Your first project, your first full album. Um, f- if I didn't make that, I wouldn't probably have these opportunities, these ideas, these songs after. Um, I think that's super important. That's very, I'm, I'm very, very proud of that. Um, recently, any recent projects um, or moments? You know what? I, I shouldn't even think about projects. I think events, things that I'm able to help the community with. Th- that that was very I was very grateful for that that I was able to organize certain things like that like for what would you do at the Capitol Theater you know raising awareness for domestic violence I I don't know if I can pick one to be honest um, but there's a lot of uh, ideas and accomplishments that um, always I always want to pursue uh, with my music and uh, I'm just grateful that I'm able to manifest that and uh, just go with it and and hopefully make an impact I want to talk about your setup I want to know what guitar do you play? What uh, is there a certain reason, like a certain sound, and what amp do you use? Uh, so stuff. No, yeah, no, great, great. Uh, I'm glad you're wondering. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I just use a Taylor. It's a jumbo. I think it's a 615 is the model. It's like this nice blue Taylor guitar. Um, yeah, but you know what? I don't use it in the studio <laughs> so you won't really be able to tell but we do use a tailor at the studio it's a different model um geared towards you know the recording environment in there uh, sounds the best but yeah i love taylor guitars i love the jumbo guitars i love the th- uh, thick gauge strings on there i think 13s um just you know strumming just sounds a lot more full right and i use different uh tuning um weird tunings as well in some songs like for miracle and right now i forget the tuning right now um, but a lot of open tuning and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the setup. No, no amps, uh, just acoustic straight through the PA and, uh, yeah. Um, can you take me through a day in your life when it's show day? I want to know what do you, uh, do throughout the day? Are you, are you one to kind of 
really stretch, you know, the fingers and kind of maybe stretch your voice a little bit too before before a show? Or are you kind of more like, okay, I'll do that at like a little sound check? It's always good to prepare early enough, like vocal cords as well. I, I tend to have a habit of, a bad habit of not doing that. Um, but no, it's, sometimes I do. There's moments where, you know, even the day before or the night before not to have certain uh, foods, you stay away from dairy, uh, no milk, stuff like that. Uh, I don't think people realize how important food is for a musician, like their their voice. And you brought up dairy, and it's not just big. liquids; it's food too, right? And and how you feel and 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 your mindset, but also it does affect your your vocals too, um, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, just basically just warming up as much as you can, um, and just feeling relaxed, and uh, just not psyching yourself out. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favorite town or city that you've played in? Ooh. You know what? I, I, it's not here. Uh, I played in Serbia. Um, you know, it wasn't a big show, but it was a small show. It was a club. And, uh, you know, I was, I was 25 or something like that. It was, it was a while ago, but I remember that experience. And I think, um, it was, it had an impact on me. I, there was, it was just, it was received very well. And so, um, I think, you know, not that I didn't have great shows. You know what, actually something reminded me now I did a CIBC for the run, run for the cure events. Those are really, really great. You know, a thousand people there waiting to run. But before that I played on stage there, that was a really, really great experience. Um, and I was grateful for that. It was early morning. I'll never forget that. It was like, I don't know, 8 a.m., something like that. It was, uh, I think they filmed it too. It was very stressful because it's like, who wants to sing at eight in the morning, but uh, pulled it off. Um, so that's something that uh, I'll never forget as well. And uh, I want to ask your favorite venue. Was it also in Serbia or is it somewhere else that you've played? I mean, I'd say Capital Theater. You know, it's not like I play there often, but the, the shows that I ended up having there, uh, it was amazing. You know, they have just the theater itself is beautiful. Right. And, uh, and, and just me thinking back, we just did the music video there. So it's, it's always a great feeling being, being there. Yeah. Mike, my uh, final question for you is if you could offer any advice to a musician trying to make it in this business or trying to get going, whatnot, they come up to you and ask you how, how you did it and what, what, what should they do? What advice would you offer them? Just take risks, um, and believe in yourself and don't think you can't do something and be comfortable with, even if there's areas for, for improvement for yourself, whatever, like it could be vocally, it could be whatever instrument you play or think you're not good enough, just be comfortable with winging it, if that makes sense and learn as you go and practice, practice, practice. And I, th yeah, just like I said, just be comfortable with making mistakes um, whatever they may be and learn from that. Cause you're going to get better and just kind of push forward with that. Have a, have a know where you want to go and just go there one step at a time. Great advice. Mike Cervini. Thank you so much for joining us here. 107.9 CKBG. It's an, it's been an honor to have you on. Thank you for having me, Spencer. Really appreciate it. And we're going to get back to more great hits and timeless classics. 107.9 CKBG. Sweet. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. Great, I didn't know. Great, great. Love to hear that. I'm glad I didn't know what you're going to say because uh, I, I, I'm happy with how it went. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, this was great. This, yeah. is, this was awesome.